Welcome to Transform Now, the podcast brought to you by robotic process automation pioneer, Blue Prism. Digital transformation has the potential to reshape the way companies service their customers, engage their employees, and manage their operations. Whether you're looking to develop strategies, tactics, and best practices to positively impact the future of work, or you're curious to learn how other companies have successfully navigated their digital transformation programs, then this podcast is for you. We're here to help you transform now. Hi, everyone. This is Aliona Gardner. So thank you all for joining today. I'm really excited to be here and to be back in the conversation about intelligent automation. As you can see, about two years ago, I uh, started the program Black Professionals in Intelligent Automation as a way to really help bring awareness to the Black community about intelligent automation, about the really the future of work and, and where it's going. I saw that there was so much potential for the Black community to really get ahead of the future of work and really be able to benefit from it as, a, as opposed to being impacted by it. And so that's why I started that program. And Shian Bade is now leading that as, as I've left the organization, but has done a really good job. And I look forward to continuing to partner with her and other leaders in the space to help propel this initiative forward. But outside of that, as you can see, I'm currently the head of people at Bread. And that will actually be changing really soon because I'm starting very shortly a new role as the head of people for a financial tech platform that is focused on bringing, helping to increase the generational wealth for the Black community. So it ties back into making sure that our Black community is really getting ahead of everything from jobs to financial literacy to our generational wealth. So I'm really excited to be here and be able to talk about diversity and how it really can help excel intelligent automation forward. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Talani. I'm the founder of OPA Dragon Buster, uh, uh, which in fairness, I was formerly known, I'm still known as the OPA Dragon Buster, where my company focuses on intelligent automation research, theory and consultancy. Our major, we have a laser focus on SMBs and mid markets, kind of banking, insurance and healthcare components. So this topic, diversity, is something that's very close to my heart. So I'm really keen on just speaking tonight, but impacting as well. So yeah, that, that was me. Beautiful. And if everyone wasn't already clicking on uh, Talani's profile and following her, do so. She's got incredible content and really does know the space. And I've enjoyed seeing her <laughs> postings, including a handwritten list of like 100 RPA companies that I was very impressed that that she could dream up off the top of her head. That was amazing knowledge. So thank you, Talani, for, for being on the call. Amal, you're next. So this is great, Ian. Should I start with the fact that we were former colleagues? I'm trying to figure out where to begin. Uh, I don't know. Actually, that's only if you want to admit that's up to you. I see I see AJ on here as well. I see Leo. So I see actually my friends on here. I see my classmates on here. I see some clients. I, I just want to thank everybody for coming because I, you know, I, obviously I care about this if you follow me at all. So how am I going to introduce myself today? I've been in the industry for four years. The Black Professionals in Intelligent Automation event that happened two years ago. I was effectively my inaugural. Ian, this actually reminds me of the chat that we had on LinkedIn when you talked to me about, hey, Amal, who are you following and who are some of the influencers in our space? Hmm. And what I love is that for my short list, I know that three of the women that joined us here today are a part of that list. So I don't tell you guys when I see you online, I may give you a little hard time and what have you, but I do respect you guys. I follow what you have to say. I follow Jargon Buster. I think it's a pact, I think it's meaningful, right? I know that it matters. So I've been in this industry for about four years now. Uh, I am a partner at Reveal Group, former colleague of Ian's at Spikes. My primary charter is CX Transformation, but one of my charters is Culture. Reveal Group walks the talk when it comes to DEI. Specifically from our co-founders, it was important to them to have black faces and positions of power within the organization. It's important for them to acquire black talent, to retain and matriculate black talent. Not just saying that in public, but actually walking the talk. I'm proud of what's going on here as far as us adding black and brown folks to every layer of the, the business. I know that my colleagues that I see on here, it was a warm welcome. And that's the easiest way for me to say it. And so I think for me, one of my favorite things here is, uh, and we'll talk about this later, Ian, right? Because one of my topics is just the importance of understanding a black IP in our industry. It's massively important, right? You have to see right. yourself doing a thing before it can be aspirational for you. And I think that this consortium is a reflection of that. And I hope that the community continues to grow. Spectacular. Thank you for admitting you, you used to work with me and, and, and thank you for that background. It, we've got so much to get to. And I, and I think Shian Bade is unmuted now, which is outstanding. So we get to hear from her as well. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry about that. My name is Shiambara Dimashan, as everyone has pronounced so 
beautifully up until now. So thank you for that. And thank you everyone for joining. As Amal was saying, I recognize a lot of the names and faces in the chat here. So that's pretty great. I'm the co-lead of or a co-founder of Black Professionals in Intelligent Automation with Aliana last year. Actually, sounds like last year, but it was actually 2020. And for the last year, I've been the main lead taking over for Aliana and trying to fill her footsteps. And really, just as she said earlier, if you were able to hear that, really focused on our mission and trying to ensure that people who are in this space know that we exist. People that are coming up are aware of intelligent automation as an option as they're looking into technology and really trying to make sure that the pipeline is aware and supported as we go through. Thanks for having me. Spectacular. So let's do a bit of audience participation for a moment so we can try out the reactions. I'd, I'd love to see with a show of a thumbs up or any other little emoji you choose <laughs> at the moment, who had heard of the, the Black Professionals and Intelligent Automation Initiative? before it was just mentioned on this call. Thumbs up if you'd heard of it before. I've got a few thumbs going up, more thumbs going up. Good, I'm encouraged for two reasons. One, because it's a, maybe a third of the audience has heard of it, but the, the nice thing is two thirds hadn't. So hopefully um, through the course of this discussion, you will not only follow the speakers who are affiliated and responsible for launching and, and driving the initiative, but you'll also check it out. And that's something we talked about actually in the green room before we launched. Unfortunately, this platform doesn't allow us to paste a link to anything <laughs> at all. Following this event, the folks who are speaking, because you are now following them, uh, you'll see them post on their profiles uh, links and more information about the initiative so that you can learn more about it. So thank you for the, for the participation. So let's start, I will start with the broadest of questions and conscious of the fact that it's almost overly simplistic, but I wanna start there. I wanna ask the speakers, what does diversity in intelligent automation, I suppose diversity in general, but diversity specifically in the intelligent automation space mean to you personally? And we'll see who wants to take that first. Amal, you're unmuted, so you can go right away if you want. Yeah, I was going to say, I know we talked about this prior, but to me, it means everything. I changed industries to join this industry because of the potential and for the future. So I saw the stats around the number of jobs that would be created. I saw the stats around the economic opportunities that were here before us. And I also saw the stats around the talent or the skill set that's going to be required to be a part of the future of work. And I think for the folks who are on the call, I see some of my friends from all over. I actually see some people that are interviewing with us. What I love about it is that <clears throat> If you do, Jargon Buster talks about this all the time. If you have a foundational understanding of what we're doing and who we are, right? So you have your certificates, you do your training, you commit to an environment of continuous learning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Over time, your overall value, right, is going to increase. I know that's true in other industries, but I know that it's very true in this industry. I think the thing that spurred me and uh, we were at, we, I think I saw my first robot demo in 2017, maybe it was 2018. And it was basically a bot doing reporting, right? A little, mm -hmm. little bit of end user computing, but effectively reporting. And I looked at the compute power of it, right? In 30 minutes versus what humans could do in that same amount of time. And I said to myself, I need a new job. I remember calling my recruiter. I was like, hey, I can actually get some a cantankerous analyst to do this over a weekend. I don't know, seven of them. Or we could get one bot to work for 30 minutes. And I started my journey from there. Dom, I think Dom is attending, but Dom was one of my longtime recruiters that placed me in a couple of different places. He actually worked for one of the uh, co-founders from Wonderbots uh, during his time at PwC. And he calls me back and says, hey, well, what do you know about robots? And Ian, I'll send you that deck so you can understand just how much I didn't understand. Not as much as I know today. But I, I tell you, if you, and I think some of the curriculums are 34 months long anyway. But if you commit to the first 40 hours and then you recommit to the second hundred on the other side of that exercise for yourself, you're going to look at things differently. You're going to describe things differently, but you do still have to put in the time. So for me, it's upskilling. We have to upskill period without getting into economics and everything else that's going on. People who are looking at extending their careers by a decade or more, and they're stuck trying to figure out what their next step is going to be. You know, I invite you to start taking classes in the BA role or others because what you'll see is a future that you're a part of, as opposed to one that you're necessarily intimidated by. So for me, why this is important is because I'm just tired of hearing the less than a percent headcount numbers without attacking any industry in particular. I'm gonna use the term chocolate because I don't wanna mischaracterize any of it. So 
That is inclusive of African-Americans, Afro-Asiatic people, et cetera, all of us. We have to be a part of that future, right? And part of us being a part of that future is having the digital capabilities that we need, not only to compete, but to be able to open our own businesses like Tawani and what she's doing, Tolong, what she's doing in South Africa. If there's 10,000 companies created, I want a percentage of those companies to have black CEOs. That's my vision for it. But more importantly, at an academic level, I want students to feel like their investment in undergraduate education has a positive ROI for the first time in their lives. And I think that transformation is a part of that story. Wow. Who wants to follow that? Yeah, no, it's always hard to follow a mall. <laughs> it's a bit, but I, I would say that I think one of my first conversations with anyone in the space around just the things that I wanted to do for Black professionals, I think my first conversation was with Amal. And he's the type of person that kind of gives you that energy to put your ideas out there because he is passionate about it. And so I love that about him. So thank you, Amal. Space needs you. But just to piggyback off of what he said, I think for me, diversity in intelligent automation is really about representation. I think that is really the most important thing because when we think of intelligent automation, it is really the future of work. It is where we all will be in the future, how how workplaces will be. We think about how much the workspace has really evolved just during the pandemic, where we've now gone from being in office to roles, uh, professional roles being uh, work from home. And we think about how that's going to evolve in the years to come. And intelligent automation plays a, you know, a huge part of that. So we need to make sure that we have our Black professionals are, are not only aware of it, but are also leading those changes as well, because it, it, it impacts them. Originally, when I started the program, I think back in 2018 or 2019, McKinsey had basically done a study that within the next five to 10 years, automation was set to basically negatively impact the Black community because so many roles that were set to be automated were kind of entry-level roles. And the majority of the entry-level roles are being held by minorities, and specifically the Black community. So for me, that tells me that to Amal's point, upskilling is like the number one thing that we have to do. We have to make sure that our diverse group of employees are being upskilled in the right way, are getting the development that they need, but are also getting access to the education to be able to learn about intelligent automation, learn how, what it is to be in the space, what it is to be a leader in this space. And so all those things are really important for us to be able to make sure that we have the right representation as we get further along in, as the years, in the years to come. We already know that we're lacking representation now, but we have the ability to change that. And if we truly do care about diversity and how important it is for organizations to really succeed, we all know, we've all seen the stats that those companies that have a diversity are more successful. So if we know that to be true, what are we going to do about making sure that we have the right level of representation in that space? And it's really important and that we push this forward. So diversity and intelligent, and intelligent automation is really critical to ensure that we are, we're really representing what we actually want in, in the future. Wonderful. Talani. I think for me, like when you talk about diversity, it's very hard to talk about diversity without talking about inclusion. And this is about including people that wouldn't be included under normal circumstances based on education, based on resources and based on opportunities as well. So I'm looking at it from a different angle where I'm not just looking at the workforce. The workforce is the, fair, is the most easy target when you think about diversity and think about inclusion. But it's also from the kind of communities we build, the kind of intelligent automation communities we build, how diverse is it? The kind of research we do in the industry, how diverse is it? The kind of tools we use, the people involved in making those tools, are they really diverse enough to be able to null out things like biases and all of all those kind of things? The kind of future generation students we're trying to build into the bring into the industry, how diverse are they? So it's quite there's quite a lot when you think about the old diversity in intelligent automation. It's not a whole operation. It's more like an end operation. You need, you need people. And this is what we're talking about because the intelligent automation is like the next revolution of the human workforce. We're talking about how this would be a collaborative effort between, you know, humans and whatever, the, whatever you call it, like AI or whatever. So we need people that would be part of this revolution. 
not just seeing what the impact is or not being eradicated by implementations and stuff like that. It's more about getting people all around, rallying around and giving people equal opportunities, in, both in terms of education, both in terms of the resources, the opportunities, they need to be well established in this, in this new revolution. Yeah. Definitely. No, amazing. Um, I yeah. can't argue or disagree with anything that anyone else has said. And just to slightly add a little bit onto it, I think when we're talking about the fact that we're looking at intelligent automation, we're recognizing that, okay, well, what is that? Robotic process automation plus artificial intelligence, thinking about all the kinds of artificial intelligence tools that can be added on to the concept of RPA. And then when we're thinking about diversity, I am in the same boat as everyone else on this call, right? It's um, talking about getting more people into this space, but also what does that look like when we're talking about people who are in my type of role where we're doing product consultancy, or are we talking about people in HR, are we talking about people who are teaching? It's talking about the entire wealth of possibilities when you're looking at the roles people could be playing and the places that they're coming from and making sure that inclusion and belonging is starting in multiple areas across the path. So I think that's part of why I was really excited to jump in when Ali started the idea of Black Professionals Intelligent Automation and just thinking about all the various points of that pipeline that we could reach and get that education and upskilling out there so that people are moving into the future of work with a better foundation. Spectacular. No, thank you all. It's so interesting. If you've covered a lot and I will fail at summarizing it, but there are a few things that stood out. And one, Amal, your point of as soon as you saw a robot, you changed industries because you saw potential and opportunity. And also the writing on the wall as well as, as the role that automation would play. But it speaks to, it really speaks to a bigger picture here because diversity in, diversity in whatever you say after the word in almost seems like, why are you diminishing it? It should be diversity in everything. Why are we talking about just in, in intelligent automation? But to your point, Amal, it's just because it's just a, it's just a, an archetype of the future, right? This is just talking about work of the future it means that innovation is impacting it. And you want to see the workers of the future in the future of work be diverse. So in this case, with our industry, it just happens to be intelligent automation, but it really is all, all exciting new opportunities where prosperity will be built. And it's important to see that diversity. I'm going to pivot here. We posted a poll on uh, LinkedIn last week because, and because LinkedIn loves polls and everyone loves all the polls that are being posted. I know you're all thrilled. More polls, you say, please. But we hosted a, a really important one. And actually the polls, multiple choice questions were inspired by the mission statement on the, the front page of the Black Professionals and Intelligent yeah. Automation website. And the question was, what was the most important element to enable diversity in intelligent automation? Now, to Amal's point of the, the all of the above is the right answer, but we forced the issue when we said, if you had to pick one, what is the most important? And the four options we provided were, one was highlight key professionals, two was expand access to education, three was offer peer support and advice and then four was an invitation to, to contribute. So it was other, just question mark. And so what we thought we'd do here is we would unpack, unpick, unpack, double click on the, the top three and, and explore what they mean to our speakers and then take a look at the results that came in from the poll. So the first option again was highlight key professionals. And Damal, you volunteered to explore what that means to you. I'm going to keep using it. It's my new favorite hashtag, right? We need to be unapologetic when we feature and highlight chocolate IP. Again, just it's easier for me to encapsulate all of us without saying black and other and what have you. Not that the nuance is unique, but I'm trying to find this catch-all just for the sake of time that isn't either colonial in its nature or diminutive generally in its marketing. And I just think it's extremely important because I think back to myself when I came out of university and I was matriculating, and I was looking for mentors. Some of my mentors are actually on this call today, so I'm pleased by that. But when I was looking for aspiration, inspiration is my job, aspirations, mentors' job, leaders' jobs, in my opinion, I didn't see a lot of them, candidly, right? In, at least in my industry. And I wanted to be sure that when I sat in this seat, that not only was I credible, but I was accessible. And so 
It's not just enough to highlight, and I want to be very clear, the folks on this grouping, the folks that you got together, Ian, these are brilliant people in our industry. These are thought leaders in our industry, period. And the second phase is going to be able to get them not only access to greater resources, but also giving them the opportunity now to be mentors for other individuals who want to aspire to sit in their seats at some point in time. And so when we talk about that, Ian, I think we have, again, I think it was the same thread. And you were like, hey, tell me who your influences are. And that Ian was being cheeky, but when he said it, he's like, well, why didn't you include yourself? He's like, because that's how I look at you. And so I want folks, especially for, again, I see a bunch of you here, right? Different platforms. We won't talk about the platform, but Joe, you're a thought leader. I know you're humble. I know you're a musician, but you're a thought leader in our industry. Sharetta, you're a thought leader in marketing in our industry. These are truths. And so what I want to do, right, Ian, I'm not going to put you on the spot because it's not fair. Plus you'll pass the quiz on this time, but two things to do for Black History Month. Don't tell me about Martin Luther King. Don't tell me about Ma Malcolm X. Tell me two things. Who are some of your favorite chocolate thought leaders? One. And then secondarily, tell me who some of your favorite anti-racist heroes in American history are that aren't Black. Before you post that Black history post, not you, then, mm -hmm. right? Tell me that stuff. And I'll tell you what I love about IP for this year. It's not just me. We're featuring our analysts and our consultants, our principals and our partners. How many firms can say that without calling them out? I don't want to have it turn into a sword fight, but we are going to have black and brown IP across the entire organization, literally as we speak. And those are some of the ways that you can exhibit solidarity. Those are some of the ways that you can genuinely be an ally, right? Not necessarily changing your logo and what have you. So when we talk about it, we want to talk about it all. You're Ian, you already do this. That's why I enjoy working with you. But I think it's very important for us to realize that in this industry, we have foundational black IP on this call, right? 2015 forward. And some people like to talk about in 2002. Okay, fine. We can argue later, but we have, found, we have foundational IP here. I, Ian, when these are going to be the thought leaders of today and tomorrow, and they sit on this call. So why I think it is important is because just like you can name, and again, I love these people. I'm not throwing shade at them, but if you can name Kathy and Arthur and Phil and all of our friends, equally, you should know not only the folks that are attending this call, but the folks that aren't on this call. And it should be just as easy for you to do that as you do anybody else. My opinion. Tremendous. Okay. So that's highlight key professionals. Thank you, Amol. The second option was expand access to education. And Talani, you had volunteered to, to explore what that option means to you. Okay. So just before this, you know, this live, I tried checking, you know, resources that are available and I'm talking, you know, online resources, whether free or paid. And you, what was, as you go along those resources, and there's a lot of the resources skilled towards people that want to go into a, dev, in a developer role. And, you know, when we talk about this education, and that's where the misconception comes from, everyone thinks that if you're going to get into intelligent automation or pretty much if you're going to get into RPI, you need to be a developer. And when we're talking about this sort of, that we need broad set of education for people trying to get into the industry. We're talking from project management, we're talking business analysts. These are plethora of, um, you know, jobs that are available to be filled up in the intelligent automation space. and Given that level of access, there's a lot that's involved in that, and there's a lot that other people can contribute. And we're talking about online online platforms. I know it's which is quite interesting. The last the last year or so, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, and the likes, and UI Part has decided to release some of the you know specialization courses on Coursera. But the fact is. A lot of people are still not aware some of these courses and some of this education are free that can be a, a nest. And you're talking about there also, I think the quickest way to find information where people will look at that will be from YouTube. And YouTube is just, it's difficult sometimes to cut through the noise because there's a lot of people doing YouTube just centered around being a developer, nursing some of your developer skills, building boss, doing all of that. And I think that's where I find it very challenging for other people. Even though it's really helped me in that sense where I've come from a developer experience or a developer background where things like that would sound like it's been inclusive, but it's not. Then right. I think one of, one of the other things I've been also finding difficult and challenging is to come around, walk around to hackathons. And people talk about hackathons are a very good way to pass knowledge. And it's always difficult for you to engage, let's say, people in academias to get into the old space of intelligent automation because it's just 
it's just quite difficult. And I think for me, education needs to start from the very bottom. We're not just talking about people in the workforce. I started developing OPI around 2015, 2016, and it was quite challenging for me to get into that space. And just what Amo was saying as well, having that representation really matters. Having that mentor really matters. And it, it's quite a different space when you don't really have that representation out there to give mm. you that support. I got my first mentor last year. And you would imagine I've been in the industry for over five years. You know, this year is probably going to make it seven. And you can imagine me trying and struggling to get a mentor, right? And even when I got the mentor, it wasn't, my mentor wasn't black. I don't have any problems with having other races as, as my mentor. But you can see that representation, even that level of education that was passed in, it was completely different. So I'm, I'm looking at, I think for my focus area is around building communities. A lot of people that follow me would notice us. I'm very, I'm very big on communities, building that community where people can actually have access to education. People can have access to understand the foundation of what intelligent automation is. I'm not just talking about implementation. I'm talking implementation, the right education, knowing how to get into the industry, knowing the right set of technologies, knowing, knowing how fitting is really quite important for me. So there's quite a lot of things that I've mentioned here, but one for me would be for people trying to get into the industry, try as much as possible to find a mentor that you can relate with. And this mentor is able to help you to cut through the noise of what kind of materials to read, what kind of people to work with and all of that. I think that just to sum it up here, I would say online resources are a good way to get things done. Then also nail down, you know, like in terms of vendors, I know vendors really help us a lot in this industry. I don't really see much of, you know, companies helping at the moment in terms of specialized trainings or what, what or whatnot at the moment. So there's quite a lot that we'll be unpacking as we go along in this call as well. Tremendous. Can I jump in just for one sec? So Talani, your work ethic and your IP is outstanding. I follow you and I learn from you. Secondarily, I would encourage folks uh, on the call, I'm gonna call out a platform in particular for this passion project because it kind of touched me because it overlays the great migration in US. Uh, Niti, which Niti I'm talking about, she has a passion project mm. where she helped upskill black and brown men and women in Mississippi. And it talked about the graduation rates for an economic population that's very distressed. And it talked about her hiring the top folks from that class and paying them really well. So for folks listening, if you're not familiar with it, Niti as one of the founders from co-founders, excuse me, from Automation Anywhere, her passion project in Mississippi, like I literally, I went to work differently after I read about it. So when it comes to talking and talk and to Lonnie, for you, I would tell you this, she's mentoring to long right now. And if you're looking for a mentor for next level, that's where you are, I think in your maturation in our industry, Niti walks to talk there specifically for African women. She's doing it now for RPA Nuggets. I know she has a couple of other ones as well. And she's not just doing it with her time and her IP, she's doing it commercially as well. One of my favorite stories in the industry, I would encourage folks to just check out the passion project that Niki did. Thank you, Amal. Let's wrap up the, the third and, and final answer on the poll was to offer peer support and advice. And Talani touched on this uh, quite a bit in her answer as well. But Aliana, it seems like it's so much of the purpose behind and the mission of the Black professionals in intelligent automation. So could you expand on the, the peer support and advice option? Yeah, absolutely. I think to what everyone's been saying a little bit, it's so important to have a mentor. It's just really important to build a network. And that it was one of the kind of core goals for Black professionals in intelligent automation was to create a network to help highlight the individuals that are currently in the space, but also create awareness for those that are not in the space that could be looking for a, a way to get in. And so it's really important that we create that awareness through education. So not only kind of events like these, where we can have these conversations and there's there may be individuals on here who may have not heard of intelligent automation or will have heard of it and don't and just want to learn more. And this is an opportunity to really create those avenues for people to say, hey, I think this is something that I really want to be a part of. And so that is really our goal is just making sure that we create that community. Um, and so when we started the program, we connected with individuals like Amal, 
um, with Talong, and they were actually part of a lot of our our events and really crying, talking about the things that they're doing, how they see the space, some of the impacts that they have made. We also connected with Talani as well. I mean, there's so many individuals in the space with diverse backgrounds that are doing really great things that we just don't hear about often. So the more that we can expand on that, elevate that, I think that's really important. And, and companies really need to help support that and help to create these events that, because we're creating this event, you know, outside of any organization, but a lot of the organizations that are in this space need to really be able to help support that and amplify these type of platforms that allow us to really bring these individuals to the forefront and create the space for people to learn more about intelligent automation learn how they can really benefit from it, how it can impact them, ways for them to be able to to challenge that. Yeah, I couldn't really say more about making sure that we are educating as much as possible our community and anyone around us that can really uh, help you know, bring intelligent automation to the forefront. Outstanding. Well, before I read the results of the poll and, uh, and ask for the drum roll, I thought what I'd do is put this question out to the audience. We've got 56 folks still listening. Thank you, everybody, for, for spending the time with us. Uh, again, it was highlighting key professionals, expanding access to education, and offering peer support and advice. If anybody has either they want to share what their vote would be or have uh, a story or something to relate to this discussion, please feel free to raise your hand. We'll have time for a few folks to come on up and join us on stage. We've got Talong is raising her hand. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? And that was a quick unmute yes, too, yes. spectacular. Great having you here. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here on this call and I'm, I'm particularly more excited because a year from, I think a year ago when the Black Professionals in Intelligence Automation pioneered, I was part of the first few people who, who were in the first few events. So I'm quite excited to, to hear the conversation, to see the third and to be a part of it. But really what I wanted to say was to open up RPA and I get to everybody else who is trying to get into RPA, who is trying to get into intelligent automation. We actually have scholarships in our initiative, the 2025 One Million Women in Robotic Process Automation Initiative. And I think everybody's already said a mouthful about representation and diversity in intelligent automation. But my particular focus is in women because Women continue to be disenfranchised and marginalized in every sector of the economy, in every sector of society, and contribution to society is to help as many women as I possibly can, particularly a million by 2025, to get into these kind of spaces, to see themselves in these spaces, and to see that they too can be leaders in these spaces and hopefully create the ripple effect that will help other women in the future. So everybody, please check out the initiative online on LinkedIn and apply because we have scholarships so you can get to learn RPA and intelligent automation for free from RPA Nugget and certify. And we actually rolling out a program right now where we are helping people that get trained through us with placements. So I think if you've been considering intelligent automation and RPA as, as something to pursue in your career, please check out the initiative because Thanks. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll make a point of, of adding that to the, the posts that we do right after the show as well. Thank you, Tolong, so much. We've also got Floyd has raised his hand. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy Chinese New Year, the Tiger. This is an absolutely great forum that you all have pulled together. Really enjoying the commentary from Ma Siambade. Aliona, Talani, Ian, great job. This is a great uh, kickstart to, you know, Black History Month, diversity and inclusion just in general. Um, very happy to see this type of initiative continuing to, to move forward. Thank you very much. Your thoughts, what do you think is the uh, the most most important element to, to encourage and enable diversity? Is it education, access to? Is it more peer support and, and mentors and advice? But what, uh, what have you seen work or what's worked for you? Well, I think probably it, it's not just a um, single a answer. I think all of those things are important. As a business owner, I certainly think that education and awareness is important for employees and for improving the pipeline for access and inclusion within this industry. But I think entrepreneurs face a different challenge 
and that is supply chain, getting into the vendor network for larger companies and providing our innovations uh, into the market. Access to capital is, is one way. Fortunately, RPA Hong Kong Limited, where working at, has been profitable for a long time, so capital has not been a predominant issue, but certainly expanding into uh, new markets where small and medium-sized businesses uh, have not necessarily um, had the capability to enter. Having mentors who can help open up those doors and guide the small uh, companies in the right direction on how they can, you know, better compete and participate with the quote unquote big boys and and big gals is often help helpful. Perfect. Because it's not just only in terms of at the employee level that we face a lack of diversity and inclusion. I think it's also within the supply chain itself, right. meaning business. Right. No, oh, tremendous point. Are you in Hong Kong right now? I am actually in the States right now. Hong Kong has unfortunately stopped Americans and Southern other countries from returning back to Hong Kong. So I and my team are all working uh, from remote, but this has been a very interesting experience and terms of managing a small uh, business across okay. um, multiple countries. Okay. I was just wondering whether I should thank you for being awake at 4.50 in the morning or not. But so. oh, wow. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going to miss it regardless <laughs> when, I, when I saw this come across the feed, especially with the great panel that you have pulled together. These folks are phenomenal. Totally agree. But, but I'm not giving you credit for being awake at five in the morning. So. Wonderful. Anyone else have well, time for one more person? Wait, you may have a cool. question. I want to definitely get the Center for Intelligent Process Automation at, at my institution or my alumni, alma mater, excuse me. I want to give them a few seconds just to talk about the program because I think it's important. It's changing the lives of the students. And then I, I saw, I thought I saw Matt Kelly on here. He's yeah. a he's transformation cool. leader, end user for us. And I thought it would be good if he's comfortable with coming on stage. And I can't tell if he's still here, but Matt, if you raise your hand. I think hearing from someone in your role, right? He's a SVP of digital transformation at a bank. I'd love to hear Matt talk about what it's like on that side of the story. If you, Perfect. If you want to step yep. on. He raised his hand. He's, he, he took direction while you're, you're leading this call really well. You're in charge from now on, Amal. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity. I started in intelligent automation back when we called it BPM and in the early 2010s and taken on a role to lead intelligent automation. I've been very sensitive to what diversity means, particularly in roles like this, where we truly are impacting the future of work. So to the point that was made earlier around the impetus of this group launching is that it often impacts people of color um, first and disproportionately. In banking, that probably is not as big of an issue in, in other places, but it's still very real. And I've been really quite intentional on how we build our knowledge from the people on the fr front line, those that we are looking to automate, as well as upskilling them on how they can make the best use of technology, upskilling them on how they can begin to demonstrate value in their own roles by automating processes. And so and with low code, no code type solutions with tools like Alterx and others that really empower end users, helping them understand the value of those tools and giving them training and capability development to, to further their own careers. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that adequately speaks to the question that you raised, but I feel like it's an important connection um, to build between the capability development and some of the change that we're driving in the intelligent automation space. No, that's perfect. And, and speaks your truth and, and your point of view on it. Thank you, Matt, so much. We are yeah. reaching the end of the hour and I'm conscious of wanting to wrap up somehow on such a, an important and, and, and big topic that's you know frankly hard to wrap up because it's, because it is so meaningful. I guess I'll try in this way. And we've talked about this and we've alluded to it as far as the different elements that could help enable and encourage and drive diversity and inclusion in the industry. I'll, I'll, I'll pose this sort of question to all the speakers and anyone else who wants to weigh in as well. What do we think that industry leaders today um, can do to advance the cause of diversity? And I know the answer could be everything we just talked about. From my perspective, it is a trick question, right? Because all of those items right. are in the BPNIA 
mission and vision. We're trying to do it all. But realistically, what do you look at first? What do you think about first? From my perspective as the leader of an internal ERG and external facing group as well, I'm trying to think about how we can get that internal support. It's all well and good if two people at an organization decide that they care about something, but do they have executive sponsorship? Do they have Mm -hmm. internal support? Are they able to work with the marketing teams and the IT teams to get certain initiatives done? Are they able to work with the education team and talk to universities and high schools? Are they able to hit the ground running in the ways that they really would like to? And it's not something that they can do on their own. So when we're thinking about those internal CSRs or ERGs, do they have that internal support? And are the companies that are changing their logos or making posts, are they also doing work the back end to make sure that they're actually giving support to people that are trying to lead those types of initiatives. Can we get Professor Richards up here just to talk about the Center for Intelligent Process Automation and how it's helping students uh, prepare Absolutely. for the future world? Professor Richards. Appreciate it. Brian Richards here from uh, Nichols College, the Center for Intelligent Process Automation. We talk about mentoring and, and um, Amal has done so much, I think for many, um, want to make sure the group realizes what else he's doing here for us and for his school. With his guidance and leadership, we've actually been spending the last I would say four years or so researching and working hard on, on how to solve some of these problems, especially in the education space. And and I don't want to say we've got it all fixed, but we have created a center of excellence. There's actually four student workers here who are intelligent process automation analysts who actually train and create automations and do business analysis for a living. We're running um, courses for students. The students here are actually preparing OER content that's engaging unintimidating, non-threatening, and that we'll be putting off into like high schools and hopefully even middle schools to start getting people inspired by this. And and we really have a lot of passion for what we're doing here. And I think we find something that really matters that people do get inspired when the barriers are down, they get interested. And once they have some accessibility to some content, the sky's the limit. And we really believe that. And and Amal, thank you so much for getting us started. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Professor Richards. I appreciate it. He's not going to call it out, but I want to call it out. A lot of his students are going to be coming from the men of distinction, so specifically black men at the school and the Institute for Women Lead- uh, Women's Leadership. So we're actively focusing on closing the wage gap and we're act- actively focusing on closing the talent gap, air quotes, talent gap in STEM. And I know that Professor Richard's work in that department is, is, is paramount to getting that done uh, specifically for you know African and uh, American and other black students on campus. So I'm really proud of what he's doing there. I just wanted to make sure that we touched on it. Tremendous. That's spectacular. It, it, I had flashbacks to, I don't want to date myself, but when I was in school and a professor who had, who was enlightened and saw the future had us all start building presentations in PowerPoint, which no one else was doing at the time. We built some really bad PowerPoint presentations with way too much animation, <laughs> way too many noises, but it was the tool of the future. And it, it's so interesting to think that intelligent automation is the PowerPoint of my day. Um, and it really is so um important and relevant for students to learn really at the earliest of ages to to open their eyes and to give them a level of comfort with um, what the world of work and the future of work will be for them. With that bizarre PowerPoint analogy, I will wrap this call up. I, I want to say first and foremost, thank you so very much to everybody who joined us in the listener box down below. Couldn't have done this call without your support and appreciation. I, I hope you found it as valuable as I did. And then I want to thank all of the wonderful co-presenters who were willing to do this with me and both experiment with a, a live audio platform and also discuss what is just so incredibly important for us to be discussing. And I, I hope this is not the last. I hope this is just the first of many of these discussions. And I'll wrap by saying, again, the platform's great because you really should have been clicking on the profiles of everybody who came up to speak, following them, please. And um, while we mentioned several different initiatives, including Black professionals in intelligent automation, we'll make it easy for you to find the links by following this event up with some posts that you will see now that you're following us on LinkedIn. Um, So I do welcome you to follow those initiatives as well and uh, continue to contribute to this discussion. Any last words from any other speaker? Amal's going to say something. We know that. So Amal, you you can. (laughs) But if anyone else has some final last words too, jump on in. (laughs) Amal, I love you, man. No, yeah, you're one of my favorite people. Wow. But I feel like on that side, I'm not going to So anybody else can. No, no, that that wasn't made to make fun of you. You're awesome and (laughs) such an outstanding spokesperson for this. So please, final words. So here's your homework, your action items, okay? For the folks that qualify, kidding, please join Black Professionals in Intelligent Automation. 
I'd like for all of us to know one another. And to Floyd's point, let's work on uh, group economics, right? So I can hire vendors, I can hire people, I can work with folks. Let's figure out what we're doing and how we might be able to work together. Let's not all spam Matthew's inbox about pilots, but let's figure out a way uh, where we can work together and grow the and grow the community. I do want to take a moment. I didn't want to do it necessarily at the onset, but I do want to thank you know the allies that are on this call. E and I include you in that statement. But the folks that are actually doing the work, y'all are paramount. I think I saw Adam here from Boston Scientific. I thank you, Rob. You got me placed and you're helping to place black talent here at Reveal Group. You are paramount. I thank you for your allyship. And then I think lastly here, as our community and as our group grows, I'd love to start to use this platform and this venue going forward to talk about other events. So let's get more specific and let's host other events like this. So maybe once a month, once a quarter, whatever it may be. But I want us to all connect, get to know one another. And let's try to figure out a couple of ways that we can not only work together, but also to help broaden and enhance and augment the community. There is a Afrotech database floating around that has a lot of black talent in it. And so the last piece I would say is that I want us to connect around that and let's make sure that we're enabling our brothers and sisters and others uh, to have access to the future of work through our networks and our practitionership. So I, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Ian. I want to thank my, my panel. I mean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I know this is important. I can't wait till we do it next year. And I can't wait to watch how we grow professionally in intelligent automation. Love it. Large heart emoji. Absolutely love it. Thank you, Amal. Um, Aliona, Shianbare, Tulani. I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining and for wanting to learn more about how we can impact intelligent automation and increase the diversity in it and make sure that we're being the change that we want to see. So thank you all. Thank you all. So it's a delight. It's 9 p.m. here. So very happy that everyone got to join. And those calling, I especially thank everyone like on uh, on stage and those joining from Europe as well. I know it's quite a lot because it's late. So it's very important we discuss things like this and being part of this discussion is very paramount. I want to thank you for that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to more discussions on this next year or next time as people might call it. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you all. And, uh, and with that, we will we'll close the room and uh, look for those posts of, of links to the, the initiatives we discussed. We really appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in to Transform Now. For more insightful discussions on digital transformation and more, check out our podcast channel where you'll find all of our previous episodes. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player. And if you like what you heard, please leave us a review. For more information about digital transformation and the future of work, check out blueprism.com to learn how Blueprism's digital workforce is enabling enterprise transformation now.